Again, let me reiterate that we have a video because there are people from now on when they call me and Melanie's the first one that said, hey, teach me to shoot. This is not, this is going to be common now. People are asking, you know, how do you shoot a gun? I'm going to tell you my story a little bit. I shot shotguns and rifles all my life. And, it, and when, I, when the Lord spoke to me one night and said, I want you to get a gun and carry it, I was like, no, I'm a pastor. I don't have a spirit of fear. I'm not doing that. And so I kind of rejected that thought to, to get a handgun and carry it. And I had a dream one night, and I, and I dreamed I got out of my truck, and I was being accosted by three men. I mean, I, I was at a fat, felon station, and they came up and said, will you help me? And I said, yeah. And I reached for my gun, and it was in the truck. I went, oh, my God, it's in the truck. And I woke up in a cold sweat, and my, tr my, and my clock said 3.57, 3.57 in the morning. Well, I didn't put a gun on. I own a 357. I didn't put it on. A week later, I had a dream again. I woke up, it was 357. I went downstairs, and I put it on. And then I found out I didn't know how to shoot. I couldn't hit a beer can from here to the wall. And so I went, well, that's not good. Can't hit anything with it, you know. Probably shoot everybody in, in, around me and kill them before the bad guy goes down. So I went out and got trained. And then when I got trained, I, started, I went and started shooting competition pistol. And I got to where I beat everybody, including the police. I love it. And then it dawned on me, most people don't know how to shoot. And, and they want someone to show them how to do it. Well, there's, there's, there's a way to train yourself. There's a way to learn. And anybody, if you can drive a car or play basketball, <laughs> you can shoot a gun. And the principles in basketball are exactly the same. A lot of it's just your, your mind, your hand doing what your mind says do without thinking. All right? So all of you have this piece of paper, and I ask you to fill it out. And so this piece of paper, get it out, and let's go. And I'm going to go down some rules. And I'm, I'm, and I'm listen, I'm going to hit the high spots. Oh. Uh, yes. I am so sorry. And here. Here. There you go. Um, and you can fill this out. I found another one. All right, there you go. All right, I'm going to hit the high spots. Nothing that I'm going to say tonight, every one of these subjects, we could spend an hour on it. I'm not trying to teach you everything. I'm only trying to get you enough knowledge to go to the range and start learning how to shoot. That's all I want to do. But I want to just go through that. So safety I want you, let's go over safety first, because whenever you go to the range, this is a blue gun. What that means is it's not real. That means if I point it, it's not going to go off. Even if you point it at the camera, it won't go off. So I'm going to use this primarily so that y'all aren't wigging out like, oh my God, he pointed a gun at me. All right, so when you go to the range, people have a tendency to kind of pull their gun out and go, hey, have you seen my new gun? Or they want to rack the slide and get the bullet out, and they're pointing it at the person next to them. And, and you've got to, first thing you've got to learn is this never points at anything you don't want to destroy. So I don't have my um, holster on me, my other one, and I'm, uh, but when you, when you learn to pull, the gun goes here, you always know where the muzzle is, and the finger is never in the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. When you're pointing in to shoot, this goes in the trigger. Then you pull the trigger, take it back out, and holster it. Don't ever grab a gun by the trigger. Guess where your foot is? Okay, this is why we're doing this not at the range. I don't... Oh, my God, take them to the hospital, you know, just doing stupid stuff. So you have to, you have to use muscle memory. We used, we talked about basketball a while ago, so I'm going to teach you something from the Bible. You do not shoot a gun or a basketball with your brain. You shoot it with your mind. That means you do something over and over and over until it becomes 
second nature. Because when the pressure's on, you don't have time to go, is that five yards or six yards or seven yards? And how? You don't do that. You let your mind take over. So if you've never trained your mind to pull and to leave your finger out, you probably will not do that. So most of what you're going to learn after a night is to go home and play with your gun with no ammo and train yourself to, to, to do, this is the way you use it. Pull it out, you're, you're pointing stuff in the house, then put your finger in and you're going to stay safe. Now, in a moment, we're going to talk about how a gun works. All right. This gun has no ammo in it, and when you're going to practice at home, you're going to verify the mag is out and the gun is empty. So if you're going to dry practice, which you can, then you're going to, then you're going to practice playing, get, gripping your gun, taking the safety off if it has one, gripping it, point in, pull the trigger. Finger out of the trigger, come back, rack slide, put safety on, put it back up. Because this has to become second nature. This cannot be like, um, well, I really don't know anything about my gun. I shot it like a year ago. So let me ask you a question. You, all of y'all have a daughter. She's 16. She just got her driver's license. And she's coming home, and you're in the car with her, and you're excited. She's, she's like, oh, I got my license. I got my license. And then she turns and says, May I borrow the car and take my friends to New York? No. What's the answer? No. Wait a minute. She has a driver's license. She can drive. Why not? It's not enough experience. Cops don't even have enough experience to carry. That may sound crazy to you. They shoot twice a year. Imagine, you shoot a basketball twice a year. Tell me how. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm about, I shoot basketball. I shoot a hoop. Man, I, I play basketball. When's the last time you played? Uh, let me see. January and last, last April. <laughs> Y'all are laughing. But that's the way most people handle this. Right. You really have no business carrying one. Right. Because it's not second nature to you. Everything, you're, when, when you're under pressure, your brain falls apart. And you're not safe. Okay, let's go back over safety. Um, never point the finger at anything. Finger out the trigger. Always when you get to the range, eyes and ears. And here's why. You don't want to mess your hearing up. And you don't want a piece of fragment of a bullet coming back and smacking you in the eyeball. So when you go to the range and you walk up, you're going to shoot. Someone says eyes and ears. That all that means is that you're putting these on and you're putting these on, and now you're going to start messing with your gun. Because I've actually had a piece of a bullet fly back and hit me right in my glasses from 10 yards back. So it does happen. And you're going to find out if you're shooting on a range with people, this bullet is coming out of this gun and going in their shirt. Now you'll be standing on the range and all of a sudden you're like, whoo! And it's their brass. And wait till it hits you in the head and the eyes and everything else. Okay. The next thing is loading the gun. Ammo, mag, out of gun, uh, racking the slide, safety of the trigger. So a lot of people will say, how do you load a gun? Now, I, and I'm, I'm going to use my gun. This is my carry gun. Uh, let me do this. Let me grab a... Let me, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Let me grab. Okay, I'm going to grab this one. Okay. The, 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 the bullet that's here is a snap cap. It's a dummy round. It's not real. Okay? So when you load a gun, people ask me this all the time. How do you do it? You always pull a mag out. Put your finger on the front of the round because that round may have stuck out. Now, why are you doing that? Because you're learning self-defense not to shoot a gun. You don't want to do that. 
when guys, someone's in your house. You want to know what you're doing. So every time you load a gun, you act like you're in a fight. Put your finger on the bullet, put it in there, and put it in. Not like that. Because that's how jams happen. Next thing you know, you're at the slide back and the bullet got jammed up in the gun and now your gun is jammed and you got a guy in your house trying to kill you. Are you all out there? Did you go home? Okay, so you're going to learn that. You're going to come up a minute. I'm going to let you play. You're going to learn, I'm trying to keep from pointing this at anybody. You're going to learn some things and one of them is you put, the, you put the mag in your hand, put the bullet there, put it in the bottom of it, and put it in with everything. I mean, put it in the gun. So that's why I said you're going to do this at home. You don't even have to have that little bullet to practice this. Okay? You can, you can practice this without that little bullet. You don't have to go buy one. You just learn that when you have a gun, you put the mag in, put it in. Then, and the reason I keep the mag out, when you rack the slide and you're going to load the gun, we're going to talk in a minute about you can't get the slide back. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But when you grab the top of this gun like this and you push the gun and you pull the slide like that. You don't. Because you're going to jam it. That's why if you're going to be like that, get an easy or a revolver. Because then you can't screw it up. But if you're going to do this, and, and, and I've been where there's women, and they, they can get to the place where they all do it. But they have to learn that when you grab it, you push, and you load that gun. Then you check. It's loaded. It's racked. Put safety on if you have one. And now you're ready to start shooting. Are you all Okay. All right, this is the kind of stuff that you can do at home and never hit the range. You can improve 75% of your shooting without ever firing a gun. Amen? Because what the difference is, you don't have to play basketball to get good. You can go down there and just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and practice one thing and practice one thing and practice one thing until you get it. And that's kind of what you're doing. A lot of this has nothing to do with the gun going bang. As a matter of fact, most of the time you're going to mess that up. And you're not even going to know why you're not shooting good. We're going to talk about that. Okay. The next one is racking the slide. Don't baby it. Don't baby a gun. Put it in there. Okay. Now, when you're at the range, do not pull your gun out. And the person is standing here. And you pull it out, and you're going to check your gun. Where's the muzzle? It's pointed at that guy right there. All right, I can't do this because of y'all. I'm going to change my. I'm at the thing. I'm not going to point it at you. But you're going to point the gun downrange. You're going to turn the gun like that if you want to play with it. You, everything you're doing, that muzzle's somewhere that it went off. Oh, God, I didn't mean for that to happen. That bullet's going where it's okay. Does that make sense? And you have to, you're going you're gonna to think this way from now on. I mean, you, you got to get to the place where if you ever pick up a gun, that muzzle is never pointed where it will do any harm. Okay, the next thing is how to, okay, the safety is in the trigger. All right, let's talk about that now. Here's, here's an M&P, and we'll use a Glock 19 in a minute. This gun, the safety is right there in the trigger. Do you see it? Nope. See that? If I pull the trigger back, it doesn't. But if I put my finger on that little spot right there, that's the safety. So what happens if that's in your purse and you pull it out by the trigger? That's the only safety on this gun. That's where it is. That's why if you haven't trained yourself to do that, I'm going to recommend you get a, a gun that has a safety on it so that if you accidentally, but you've got to train yourself. I've got to turn around. 
I'm trying to keep safe. When you come up, you're going to take that safety off. You see what I just did? You're going to have to practice that. Safety's off. Does that make sense? So you have to think about what you're doing, how you're going to carry it in a purse, on your body, what, what, what you're going to do with this gun. And so uh, I, have, I gave you the list so that when you go down to shoot straight and you don't own a gun, I'm going to take all the, um, uh, what do you call it when you don't know what you're doing? All the, all the mystery out of it. Glock, M&P, or SIG. There's others, but those are, those are safe bets. They're just basic $300 to $500 pistols, okay? They're not hard. They're not, they're, they're not expensive, but they will work, okay? This is the shield, all right? Let me open this back up. All right. How do you practice? All right, let's get my blue gun. Let me get where I can. No, no, you're good. You're good. This, is, this won't go off. I watch people shoot. Let me get my other gun back here in a minute. When you pick up a gun, you see my hand? Where's my thumb? It's flagged. It's not down here. And then you take your pistol and then you wrap your hand behind it. What's happening to that slide when it comes back? It's fixing to rip your thumb open. You grab a gun like that. You're going to go, okay, I mean, I, is that good, Pastor? No, you're, you're going to, this slide is coming back. And the bottom of it is eating your thumb up. So when you grab a gun, when we get out of the range, and we'll get up here in a minute, and I'll let you play with these guns. You grab a gun like this. You get your hand in it, firm. This is strong, and this is flopping. There's a hole there. This part of your hand. My ink pen don't work. I got one. This part of your hand right here is going in that hole because you want all the meat that you got on this gun. So you grab your gun, there's a hole, you create one. Then this part is fitting in that hole. So it's like this, looks like this. You grab the gun, that goes there. You grab the under the bottom, lay that thumb down, lay the other one on top of it and point in. Because that gun's going to go, boom. And you don't want to half hold on to it. Because you're going to get one good shot and about five that don't hit anything except everybody else. Okay? So you're going to learn at home how to grab. Is it important how to hold the ball? It has a lot to do with whether you hit anything. Because those fingers have got to roll off and point right at where you're going. This, your hand... You, you're pointing with your hand, not you're pointing. This hand is fitting in there, and you're getting as much of that gun as you can get. But you don't want to. You don't want these thumbs doing that. You want the hand squeezing, and the thumbs are loose. Does that make sense? Because you're going to push your gun around, and you're going to miss everything you're shooting at. You're going to be going. I didn't hit anything. Did I hit anything? No, you didn't. Okay, so a lot of that, I mean, I've taken a lot of people out of the range, and in one hour, I've got them shooting two-inch circles at 10 yards because it's just a matter of just showing you how to do it. It's not all that difficult, but, you gotta, but if you start with bad habits, you're gonna, then it's harder to work with you, okay? All right. All right, grip, trigger, and sights. Okay, let's talk about trigger now. This is why people miss. It's not because you don't have the sights lined up. You're going to notice, and this is why I want you to do this without ammo. When you, when you grip in, you're going to notice that you always do this. Why? You're anticipating recoil. You know it's coming. So you go ahead and go, sight, 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 and just shot him in the knee. <laughs> and didn't hit anything. Right? 
So one of the things I'm going to do when we get out there is I'm going to teach you how to manipulate a trigger to where the gun never moves. Because that's that's, you can actually have the sights goofy and hit him. But if this is not working and you're gripping the gun like a monster, you're going to, you're going to pull the gun over and down and to the left. Now, that's fine when you're here to there. Well, it's not fine then either. But, but anything else, you're missing. When police are in confrontations, 25% of all rounds shot hit the assailant. And most of it's not vital. Because cops can't shoot. Most, most people in America cannot shoot a gun. Most people can. So the practicing is very important. So when I'm, one of the things I want you to do is learn... Learn how to get a grip on a gun so that when I get out there, I'm not having to spend an hour teaching you how to get it, your hands on it. Where, you're, where you've got your thumb up here on top of the slide and it won't work or behind the slide where it's ripping your thumb to pieces. Learn, go home and get your hand on it and get it, get it, get it to where you're pointing in, pull trigger, take finger off the trigger, go back. Does this make sense? Okay. All right. The next thing, trigger, sights, and jam. I'm going to draw a picture of sights in a minute because a lot of people don't understand what it's supposed to look like. Here's your target, and we're going to talk in a minute about how to practice. There's two kinds of shooting. One of them is you're going to work on a trigger, where you're going to learn to shoot and the gun doesn't move. But you don't do that in a self-defense, because in self-defense, you're going to shoot like Annie Oakley and, and Matt Dillon. You're going to shoot fast, and you've got to learn to shoot fast. And the difference is you can shoot from the foul line as slow as you want to. But when you're running through the when you're running through the court, you have got to make that shot on the move. You got to you got to you you're, you've got to do this is fast. So so in a minute we'll get into sight shooting versus you know aiming. But for now, the back of that sight has a little. Um, well, that's the rear sight on the gun. The front sight has a post that comes right to the top of there, and you've got to split that difference, and that bullet's going to hit right there. Does that make sense? All right. Now, this is important when you first start shooting, that you're lining your rear side up and lining your front side up and shooting as accurately as you can because you're going to be working on your trigger and your grip and everything. After about two or three times for the range, I'm going to get rid of the rear sight for you so that all that you're going to do is point a front sight at the guy and go, boom, that's it. The, front, the minute the front sight touches, you pull the trigger and that bullet will hit there. Even if it's off a little to the left or right or a little high, it'll hit the 8-inch circle. But then you're going to slow down and do some headshots. So it'll look like this. Doo-doo. Boom. Because there's no reason if someone's got a hostage, come around here, Jeannie. There's no reason if there's a hostage, don't worry, I am going to point it at you, but it's plastic. You can kill me. I just hit me in the head. You're, you, this finger don't work when there's a bullet in your brain. So this whole thing of you laying your gun down when your wife's being held hostage or somebody in your family because they've got you in this situation, this guy's body, might not you might not be able to hit him, but I got a head right here, and you've got a four or five inch circle to take out. And everybody in this room after about, uh, you know, about four days, at, a, at you, you can put bullets in a one inch square. You can. Uh, I took Lisa out and said, well, before we go to front side, you're going to teach you to shoot. Well, at the end of the, of the, of the four days, there's a shoot-off with the two best shooters, me and Lisa. Because she had already learned to hit a one-inch square at, you know, at five yards and a two-inch circle at ten. So, so you're going to learn to hit that every time. Amen? Okay. All right. So grip, trigger, sights, and jams. We'll talk about jams in a little bit. All right, what to buy. 
Everybody wants to know what do I buy. So I have a bunch of guns here, and let's talk about them. This is a Glock 19. Everything up here is 9 millimeter. I didn't go 40, I didn't go 45, and I don't do 380. I think you have, is that a 380? I have no idea. Okay. I, I don't want to, this is probably, this is actually a 22. Danny's guns. All right, what's the idea of carrying a gun? Not to kill him. Don't say that in the court of law. I just want to kill a dude. Don't say it. Don't ever say that. You want to stop him. This will kill him, but he will not stop him. Do y'all see that? So stay away from, and I got that written in there, stay away from bullets that you think you can shoot well, but you might as well be throwing rocks at the guy. Ain't doing anything. So a nine, they're now making ammo that this will do just about anything a 45 will do, they say. I have not tested it on anyone. I have asked for volunteers, but no one has stepped forward. <laughs> It'll do everything you need to do within reason. A, a handgun is anemic. It's anemic. This is really not. When you see the movies where the, you, they, the guy got shot and fell, no. He got shot and went, oh. Okay. Most of the time, the minute you pull it out, they go, that's enough. Just knowing you have it is enough to stop them. And then when you point it at them and pull the trigger, most of the time they'll quit. But if not, you want to know that their life expectancy is very short because you don't want something that's, that's you know, you can get hit with a 22 and live for an hour. Well, they can whoop you good while they die. You don't want that. You won't take them down. So this is a Glock 19, and I brought it out because though this gun is easier to hit with and easier to shoot than the next one I'm going to show you. It's also kind of heavy in a purse. But there are women who carry, and, and that's what they want. They want a 19. And this the cops carry this. They carry a 17, which is a little bigger. So if you have a home defense gun or, or you don't mind a little extra weight, I think this holds like 15 rounds of ammo. It's a four-inch barrel. And so this is the most popular handgun in America, Glock 19. It's about $450, $500 gun. Okay? All right. This is a great gun. Now, the next one is still a Glock. But it's called a 43. Now, the reason that is, is it's a little smaller. You see that? And so, therefore, when you're walking around with a gun in your purse, it's still a 9 millimeter. It just has a mag with about, what, seven rounds in it? And, and, and it's called a 43, and they have a 43X. The 43X has the grip of this one with the barrel of this one. So as far as a, and, I, and I'm not telling you what you need to buy. That's why I'm doing this tonight, because you're going to ask me, what do I buy? I want you to know Glock makes a good gun, and so I wrote it down in your paper. There's, there's a 19 and there's a 43. Now, this is a smaller. It is referred to as a subcompact gun, okay? Questions? Okay. Which one do you get, the Ford or the Chevy? That's up to you. But I brought another one because I wanted you to know we're going to go Ford now. This is a Smith & Wesson referred to as a compact. It is the same gun as this, but it's made by Ford, not Chevy. And actually, these are a little cheaper than these because this is so popular. All right, are y'all okay? There's a, so on your, on your paper, there's a 1.0 and a 2.0 because the 1.0s are the old M&Ps, and they have three and a half inch barrels and not four, but the new ones have fours just like the 19. So this is as good a pistol as the 19, but right now they're a little less money, so it's just a matter of which one you like. This is a shield, which is just like the 43 but it's an m &P. Now, in this gun here, though there is one advantage to this gun that, that Glock does not have, they realize there are women 
who have a hard time doing that. And you may come up in a minute and go, oh, God, God, Lord, my son. All right. So if you go down, they have a gun called an EZ. It's a shield, EZ. And that means they've taken all of the, they fixed all the springs and everything in the gun to where it's like, even a girl could do it. Okay. All right. One more thing that I'm going to, now, Sig Sauer in your paper is a gun uh, down in the bottom. If you'll look there, it's got Glock, Smith & Wesson, compact, 2.0 compact, 1.0 compact. And the only difference is the 1.0 is the older version and the newer version just has a slightly longer barrel. Okay. I said about $500. Actually, it's less than that. For y'all to know this and don't run down the shoe straight right now. Yeah. Right now on the table, they have two 1.0 shields for $329. I only saw two of them. I don't know when they're gone. They're gone. I don't know. I just saw them on the table. So that's pretty good, inexpensive, nine millimeter carry gun for a girl. I don't know if it has a, all right. The next one is called a SIG. SIG, I left it last because most people don't buy them. They're a little more money, but they're also a little more quality. They're just a, a little. And the, the good news about them is the 320, if you buy the inside of the gun, they call the gun, you can put it in a full size, a mid size, or a compact so that you can actually have three, four, five, six guns and you only bought one. Because now you can buy the handle. I'm so lost. Huh? Did I lose you? Yes. Okay, let me explain it to you. Only SIG, only SIG, just, just don't worry about it. Inside this gun is guts, trigger, and a mechanism. SIG made it to where you can take the guts out. Easy. And I'll take this, I won't take this one apart. I'm going to take this apart. You can imagine doing this at the range where you have all these questions. Okay. All right. Okay, this is the inside of the gun. That is a trigger and your striker and your trigger bar and all of that. In the SIG, you just lift it out. And you can put it in a big gun. You can buy a new frame for, I don't know how much, I don't know, I don't know the SIG. So you can take a little gun and make it a big gun. You can make a big gun, a middle gun, a little tiny gun, 357 gun, 40, 40. I mean, you, you've already bought, and all the government knows you own one gun. That's really good in other countries where you're limited how many guns you know. Now you can have all the guns you want. You can have five inch barrel, four inch barrel, three inch barrel, two inch barrel, snub nose, anything you want, because the guts come out. That's on your paper, and you can go to front, down the shoot straight and say, I don't know all about this sick, but a little more money. It's not like buying a Glock. It's like buying a Lexus instead of a Corolla. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let's do over one more. There's another gun down there called a 1911. 1911 is the old style military guns. That's not on your paper. And they have a hammer. See the hammer? There's no hammer on there. There is, but it's inside. It's called striker. So this one's cocked all the time when you pull it back, and so is this. There is one advantage to this gun is it has a real big safety. Now you can understand, I like carrying this even though it's kind of expensive because when I draw it, I have a safety not in the trigger but up here on the side. And... It's more accurate, but it's also more expensive. So they make 45s or 1911s, and you've got to learn a little bit because there, there's a little more to them. They're a little more complicated. You better keep them clean, but it's a little bit more 
Do uh, you understand? I'm kind of getting out into a car that you might need to learn how to tune it up. Put high test gas in it, that kind of thing. So people that shoot a lot, they love these guns. Because I can, you know, this gun will shoot a one-inch circle at 25 yards. I mean, it'll, it'll make a hole. It'll make one ragged hole at 25 yards. So, so the gun is more precision. But it also costs $2,800. <laughs> okay. Then you can get a 45 for 1000 Okay. All right. Where are we? All right. Grip safety. There is a grip safety. EZ has a safety on them. Um, compact. All right. Let's talk about ammo now. You're going to go down, and then you're going to ask me about buying ammo. You're going to buy eyes, ears, gun, ammo. This is what we call full metal jacket. Do you see that bullet? These come in boxes of 50. This is the cheap junk you shoot paper with, but not people. Because it makes a hole, and it doesn't stop them. So, it'll, I mean, it's a bullet. But it's not made for people. This is a hollow point. When this hits something, it opens up into a mushroom, and the guy knows it. It turns into about the size of a nickel in your body, and it does an enormous amount of damage in a person. Okay? But these come in boxes of 20. Do not take these to the range and practice with them because this is about $25 for 20 rounds. This is about $10 for 50. So when you go down, you say, I would like some practice ammo. I'd like two or three boxes. And may I have a box of full metal, of, of yeah, not full metal jacket, of, of hollow points. And that's written for you so you'll know what you're doing when you get down there and you don't, they'll think you're like, where did you learn all this? You're so smart. <laughs> all right, you don't want to shoot hollow points at the range. You do want to make sure your gun shoots them. Okay, what? That's on there, so target self-defense. What not to buy? Do not buy a 380. A 380 is a nine short. It's a tiny nine millimeter. There's not a lot of punch there. It's, are y'all getting this? If you own one, it's better than not have anything. But women like to buy them because they fit in the purse and you don't know it's there. The problem is, is you have to use it one day and you got to blam, 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 and the guy's going, what are you doing? You're going, I'm shooting you. And you're going, yeah. And he's still coming at you. All right. Don't buy 25 automatic Saturday night specials. <laughs> All right, let, let's go down this road. You, you, need to, you need to make sure Sorry. when you pick up one of these guns in a minute that your hand, like these men, they may not want a little pistol because you got to get your hand in there. My hands are huge. So when I, when I carry this gun here... I actually have another set of grips that are larger than this because my hands are big. And I, and I want to get my hand on that gun, and I want it to fit in the gun. So I, have a, I, I almost can't carry a tiny gun around. I might as well just, okay, you get that? It's like shooting basketball with a softball. It just don't, it just don't work. All right. I love my basketball illustrations, don't you? All right. All right. Let's talk about shooting. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing good. When you go to the range, oh, one more thing. I'm a member of the U.S. Law Shield. You know what the fifth is? What's the Fifth Amendment? The fifth means, what does it mean to plead the fifth? You do not have to incriminate yourself or testify against yourself. And when a police says what you say can and will be used against you, you bet your sweet bippy they will use it to incriminate yourself. So when they come up and go, what happened? You say, I shot him. You just sent yourself to jail. You just pled guilty to a crime. So you say, um, I, I would like to request that uh, I'm, I've just called my lawyer and I'd like to wait. And he knows it. And here's why. Cops don't mind you saying that. They don't think that you're going, 
Well, he's got something to hide. He knows because that's less paperwork for him. Just look at him and go, I've called my lawyer. You call 911. You say there's been an altercation at uh, 1121. Uh, uh, have mercy on, on his soul, Jesus drive, and then hang the phone up. Don't, have, don't talk to her. Leave her alone. They, she knows where you are. She'll find you. You got me? Then you pick up this one. You call the guy, and you sit and wait. All right. Shooting. When you get to the range, now we're going to talk about taking bullets because you need to feel the gun go off. You need to feel it. You can't just practice like this, dry practice, draw, click, draw, click, draw, click forever. you got to actually feel, bang, it's going off. Okay. So I want you to go to the range with, the, with this in mind. If you go to shoot straight or you go anywhere, start at three yards. Start right here. You, this is where most situations will happen anyway. And you need to get to the habit where you're shooting at what we call an eight-inch circle. So now I get to do a little bit of, is that what you're looking for? No. no, it is not. If you do that, you're shooting too slow. Yeah. You, know, you understand, this guy's coming at you. You don't want to go, bang. Bang. That's not, that's not good. You want to go boom, boom, boom. Okay? All you want is for the bullets to be in there somewhere. You understand? That's good shooting. That's called self-defense shooting. So you're going to find out how fast you can pull the trigger and keep them in an eight-inch circle. Are you all listening? Okay, this is called self-defense. You just want to put them in here. But, you, but if they start going here, here, and here, you're shooting too fast. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to learn your speed. Speed comes, you're going to shoot at the speed of sight. That means you never double tap. Never, never double tap a gun. That means that when the front sight touches... Boom, pull the trigger. That means the front sight's going to rise up here. It's going to come back down. Boom, pull the trigger again. But what if it goes that fast? Boom, boom, boom. You can shoot as fast as you want to as long as that front sight is there. Never double tap. Never go. Because all you did was hit him once somewhere. Okay, so you're going to go out of the range and you're going to practice putting your rounds in here. When you get to where you can do it at three yards and you're at shoot straight, back it up to five and do it again. Stand there and go, boom, boom, boom. You're not trying to impress everybody around you with hitting that. All you want to do is put them in here. And you're going to learn how good you can Mate, you're also going to find out that some of your rounds are going to go down here and they're going to go over here. And then I'm going to teach you when we go to the range how to stop that. There's a way, there's tricks to quit doing that to where you're pushing the gun. Okay. All right. All right. What's next? Small group, you're shooting too slow. Large group, good. Outside the circle, too fast. Hot Headshots is what we call a Mozambique. Can you turn this over here with me? All right, the guy comes up. This is an anemic weapon. You're a girl, you weigh 125 pounds. This guy is 280 pounds of mean and his own drugs. And you did what I said. Do, do, and he's still coming. Slow down, put it right in his head. Boom, pull the trigger. It's called a Mozambique. The reason they did, that was done in Mozambique was because if you put one here, it's over. He won't wiggle. You got that? Now, the problem is, and we'll talk about this at the range, what are you going to do when there's three of them? We're going to learn about transitions. We're going to learn how to go from boom, 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 
boom, boom. And then you're going to come back, go to ready, and watch if anybody's still coming at you. And you're coming back up. And that's when I'm going to take you out and teach you how to hit that red dot. So you can slow up and go, poo. Now, I have a basketball question. Why would anybody ever miss a foul shot? They ain't practicing. See, that's a gimme. I mean, these guys understand that because I'm, I'm, I'm venting right now. <laughs> there ain't no pressure. Ain't nobody trying to take the ball away. He's like, dun, 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 dun. I mean, this is a gimme shot. Do you, if you don't play enough to hit that thing with no pressure, you, you need to go home. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't play basketball as much. Does anybody have questions? Now, this is my next target. You'll notice that this is a cheap target. You don't have to buy expensive stuff. When we, when we get stuff at the house and Lisa buys stuff, I cut the cardboard up and I draw circles on it. And I go into my office and I make me a bunch of targets and I run them off on our printer. There's no reason you need to pay a lot of money for a target. So what I do with this one is this. I will go to three yards and I'll put three rounds in that and three rounds in that and three rounds in that and three, three. And then I'll use front sight and back sight. And then the, this one, I'll go to five yards. And then I'll work, on, I'll work on trigger control. I work on trigger when I go out. And then I work on grip. And then I work on speed. Now, you've got to get to the place. How do I do this? You've got to get to the place. So I'm going to ask you a question. How long does a gunfight last? I can't hear you. <laughs> give, me, give me a time. Seconds. It's about, blah, blah, blah. it's it. That's all there is to it. By the time you figure, what happened, it's over. Are you all out there? I'm trying to tell you. So your ladies are in the parking lot. And, you, and you've got to get to the place, and we're going to talk about, um, I, got set, I got seven minutes. You, you've got to learn to be aware of where you are all the time now. You got a buggy, and you, where, does anybody have a purse I can borrow? I want to borrow your purse. I want to, I need a, I need a real one. I need a real, real purse. one? <laughs> big one? I don't know how y'all do this. This is how you need to be walking. You, you've got to get, if you see somebody's out walking through the parking lot, you don't need to go. Where is it? <laughs> oh, my God, where is it? Mm -hmm. It needs to be in your hand. Yeah. If you have to, you carry, you walk to your car. You, get out, you walk it in your house at night. This needs to be there. You got to start thinking a little outside the box. If you're in a situation where something could go down, so most people are in white all the time. They're in a zone where they're oblivious to problems. So a guy walks up to you. This is too close for someone in the parking lot to be talking to you. This this is how it needs to be. I need to walk up. She goes, that's close enough. And by then, she's already got a hand on a weapon. Don't brandish it. Yes. Don't pull it. The only time they'll see it is right before the flash. So I'm not going to point at you. It needs to look like, that's enough? I said back off. Now, if they don't get the picture now and they make a step, boom, 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 call the cops. Don't, don't. TV, I hate TV. They talk and they talk and they talk. Shut up and kill the guy. <laughs> I know I'm, you're here and going, this guy's a pastor? This is a pastor? Well, let me tell you something about pastors. Pastors take care of sheep. And that's what I'm doing in here because I want you, Lisa walked in the house one night and the whole house had been ransacked. 
But I had already got her in the mode. I mean, I'm, I'm going, baby, if I'm gone and you walk in a house, you got your gun in your hand, you where's your gun, where's your gun, what's in the car? So she's got in the habit of getting out of her car, put her 38 in her hand, she walks in, the house is upside down. Now, what if he's in there? She's standing there with her hand in the purse with her hand on a weapon, and she backs out, calls 911. But she's standing there with a gun because you know how much time you've got? 1,001, two, three, it's over. No time to go look for a gun. So I don't know how you're planning on carrying now, some of y'all have seen that every Sunday morning, it's on me. Uh, we're, we live in a pretty wild world right now. Okay. All right, let's look at my notes and see how I'm doing. Uh, evaluate. All right, there's one more thing. We're going to get into code white in a minute, but let me, let me make one more statement on safety. Ocell's a bad guy. Where's the bullet going after it misses him? In the wall, what's behind it? All right. What about now? Come on, y'all. You've, you've, you've got to think. See, I've trained our guys that, that, are in, that are in security. They don't stand on that wall over there to if someone comes in, they shoot into this room. You, you can't think like this. They, they're on this wall shooting out in the parking lot. So they're, they're positioning themselves. I told you right there to stop it. I'm getting myself in a position. If I have to pull this trigger, that bullet's going where I know it is. All right, now I'm going to do one more thing for you. Ocell, I need you to be a bad guy. I can do that. Come on. All right, we're going to do something right now. Code white, code yellow, code orange, code red. Code red means he's ready to kill me. But people... Do not think two things at once. So how would I handle a man? Go ahead and point in on me. Okay, this is bad. He's wanting my wallet. Give it up, give it up. Hey, buddy, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to kill him. But what did I do? I got him out of code red. This, this, do you understand what I did? See, if I throw it at you, what does she do? She's grabbing the gun. She's grabbing the wall. She's not, she's not thinking about the gun or me. She's thinking about, I just distracted her. And you will, you will do it too. You, no, you won't. Either. <laughs> do y'all see what I just did? You, you've got to start learning to think a little bit like, what would happen? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Man, don't. I got money. I got a lot of money. I, I mean, I got credit cards. I got everything that you want. I mean, my God, I got jewelry. I got a watch. I've got a watch. <laughs> right now, because he's not thinking about shooting me. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about? Come on, y'all. Come on. You've got to start thinking a little bit outside this box to where you're not Matt Dillon. He's pointing, and I'm going to outdraw him? I don't think so. I can draw and shoot you in about one point, one second close, but 1.2 to 1.7. Most people, it takes them about one and a half to two seconds to draw a gun, point it in, pull the trigger. That guy's got a gun pointed at you. You're dead. That don't work. So you've got to start thinking, I got down here, always be conscious you're surrounding a uh, code white, yellow, orange, and red. You've got to start thinking of this guy, where's his mind? Is he ready to kill? And can I get this situation to where he's not going to shoot me or they're not going to shoot me? One man was in a, uh, was in an apartment complex and he's an old man and he carried a gun and he walked into his apartment and a man has an AR rifle pointed at him and he fell down and had a heart attack. He goes, oh, my God, don't kill me. And he fell on the ground and had a heart attack. Well, what did the guy do with the rifle? He put it down. And the guy's rolling on the ground. And he shot him. And the rifle never, he never shot him with a rifle because he put it down. He didn't need to. The guy's dying a heart attack. But he wasn't. He's faking. He's faking. <laughs> I'm pretty good, ain't I? This is fun, ain't it? All right. 
What else are we doing? <laughs> she, at least she got it. All right. Uh, trigger control, code white, how long does it last? Okay, I am done. All right. I'm done with my part of it. Goodbye. Have a good day. All right.